Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk today about VAERS reporting. That was something that Dr. Gold pointed out in our last call that uh, people, I think, still uh, misunderstand. And it's really been uh, an effective tool that the anti-vax campaign has used uh, actually for quite a number of years, uh, going back well before the start of the pandemic. But obviously, it's accelerated. And it's part of an overall strategy of using data and information that appear to be uh, valid uh, and, and appear to be scientific to confuse people and to to weave this alternate reality, which um, you know it, at at some point either just confuses people so much that they give up, or or it sometimes actually convinces people that this alternate reality is is real. So it's it's kind of a form of of gaslighting there. So this was a report that uh, I saw um, just a couple of days ago that was given to folks and. Uh, it is a VAERS uh, reporting system uh, report. So this is a, a system that the CDC has called Wonder, which allows you to explore VAERS data and create uh, custom reports. So you can see this is a report about the COVID-19 vaccines, uh, seeming to indicate that there have been uh, you know, 14, over 14,000 deaths, 14,000 life-threatening, and uh, over 18,000 permanent disabilities associated uh, with the COVID-19 vaccine and, and all of these other things, uh, congenital anomalies and birth defects, um, <clears throat> which are verifiably false, but uh, at first blush appear to be um, concerning and look as if the vaccine has significant amounts of um, adverse events associated with it. Now, if you go to the CDC's site on uh, COVID-19 uh, adverse events with the vaccine, you can see the, the up-to-date and uh, epidemiologically uh, supported uh, evidence for adverse events with, with a number that uh, we have been uh, talking about and are familiar with, including uh, a, a rare but real occurrence of anaphylaxis, as we see with any vaccine. Vaccine or, or medical product, about uh, two to five per million so far who've received the COVID-19 have had some anaphylactic reaction. Now that does not uh, indicate death. Um, you know, the rate of uh, the mortality rate from anaphylaxis is in the low percents, a couple of percent, but still uh, there have clearly been deaths associated with uh, anaphylaxis from the vaccine which you are going to expect if you're vaccinating uh, over 170 million people so far. Um, more if you're including uh, single doses. The TTS, thrombocytopenia uh, with thrombosis syndrome, which we've talked about, uh, occurs uh, most commonly in women receiving the J&J &J vaccine. And again, the rate uh, is reportedly about seven per million that have been documented among uh, US uh, vaccine recipients. And then myocarditis and pericarditis, which we've seen more frequently in young males, uh, have 963 confirmed reports, and there are other epidemiological studies that indicate that there have been uh, more than that, but the, the incidence, again, is in the dozens, uh, 200 per million, and, and I've laid out the math about that in terms of uh, the dramatically uh, higher risk of myocarditis and pericarditis from actually getting COVID-19, not to mention all of the other adverse events in young men. So the bottom line is that the true uh, known associated adverse events associated with the vaccine are, are much, much lower. Uh, and there's a reason for this, and, and that's because VAERS is intentionally established to capture any and all potential adverse reactions, whether or not people think they were related to the vaccine or not. Uh, and you can see that that's actually specifically pointed out in the disclaimer for the VAERS system that uh, comes up on the first page when you look at CDC VAERS. Um, and, and you can see that highlighted on, on the right there. I uh, extracted some of the most salient comments. One is that vaccine providers are encouraged to report any clinically significant health problem following vaccination to VAERS, whether or not they believe the vaccine was the cause. And I'm sure that most of our providers here have at some point submitted reports to VAERS. And uh, in many cases, we didn't necessarily think that the vaccine was the cause, but we thought it was important to make sure that it was documented. And the reason for this is 
is because in rare instances, VAR has, VARES has been able to pick up the safety signals of very rare events, but real events that can be associated. One of the best examples is in the late 90s, uh, there was a new rotavirus vaccine that was uh, approved in the US and uh, was given to kids. And um, VARES actually over the next year picked up the pattern that uh, a small but significant number of kids developed in a susception uh, or intestines essentially folding in on themselves, which is a, an, an emergency and often needs uh, surgical repair, uh, you know, and developed in a susception after the vaccine. And it turns out that that was a real association, that more in-depth studies found that that was uh, rare but true. And so in developed countries where the risk of serious rotavirus infection leading to dehydration and death is very low, uh, a decision was made to take that vaccine off the market. The rotavirus vaccines are still widely used in the developing world because the risk of uh, dehydration and severe outcome from rotavirus far exceeds the risk, uh, uh, exceeds the risk of intussusception. But that was an example where VAERS actually did its job, and that's exactly why VAERS is around. But you can see that anybody can make a report to VAERS, um, including the public, and that these reports are acknowledged to contain incomplete and accurate coincidental and unverifiable information. Uh, all of these reports are voluntary, which means they are subject to bias. Um, so if you search the CDC Wonder database, again, which pulls the data from VAERS and gives it in a, a customizable report, they go through this similar um, uh, adverse VAERS um, um, disclaimer, again, uh, before you are able to actually search the database, you actually have to click on a button acknowledging that you've read the disclaimer and that you understand it. So um, it is not as if people who've used this database for misinformation don't understand uh, the uh, uh, the reality of what VAERS is. And a number of people have done studies on uh, kind of validating reports that have been put in VAERS. This is one, and you can see it's from 2012. So again, long before COVID-19, looking at the validity of VAERS reporting, uh, this group actually went through the 15 odd thousand uh, case reports um, from a year, uh, I believe it was 2010, but don't quote me on that, uh, and randomly selected reports um, weighting it towards um, severe um, severe event reports. So 75% of the reports they looked at were severe event reports. And you can see based on their random sampling, what they came up with with severe events that would be related to vaccine, Lyme disease, which I, I doubt a vaccine makes a tick uh, more likely to bite you. Uh, lung cancer, which again, don't think we've had any uh, recording of a vaccine being linked with any kinds of cancers. Uh, feeling weird, uh, which is obviously one of the uh, less severe reactions, and a lot of other things in this list you can see, which would be far-fetched to be potentially associated with the virus or with the vaccine, excuse me. And what they found in this analysis is going back and actually looking at the medical records for all of these reports and doing uh, an in-depth uh, expert consensus on uh, the medical records and, and the history, found that only 3% of these uh, serious, mostly serious VAERS reports uh, were actually uh, definitely linkable to the vaccine. The vast majority of them were either unlikely or un completely unrelated uh, to the, the vaccine. And so there's been a number of media reports that have uh, done fact checking about VAERS. And again, this goes back long before COVID. You can see this uh, PolitiFact uh, fact checking on VAERS was done in 2017 after a, a little row that happened in the Texas uh, state legislature. Uh, but this uh, reporter was able to go back and document a couple of uh, interesting occurrences in VAERS, including one where a neurologist intentionally submitted a report into VAERS that uh, claimed that a vaccine had turned him into the Incredible Hulk. Uh, and it wasn't until several months later that a, uh, a CDC uh, epidemiologist who has the task, uh, there's a team of them that have the task of verifying all these reports called to ask permission uh, to remove that uh, report from VAERS. Be because this is a voluntary public reporting system, CDC actually can't remove that report unless the submitter volunteers to allow that to be removed after they've talked to the CDC and, and maybe have uh, 
discuss the fact that it is unlikely that this vaccine turned the person into the Incredible Hulk. But if he had not uh, agreed to uh, removing that report, it would have stayed in. And so uh, you can imagine, especially with the uh, uh, amount of uh, excitement and uh, zeal that the COVID vaccines have elicited among the general public, the number of different reports that have gone into VAERS for COVID-19 vaccines um, that probably are uh, of similar veracity. So that's uh, what I wanted to talk about in terms of VAERS uh, and uh, happy to answer any questions.